working with Buhari, I wrote my book to change false narratives about the president, Femi Additional. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Special advisor to former President Muhammadu Buhari on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Additional has explained that he wrote the book working with Buhari on the former president to change the false narratives out there. He said when he was offered the appointment to work with Buhari, he was reluctant to accept it because he did not know what he was going into. Quote, I would say I had known President Buhari long before I came to work for him as advisor on media and publicity, unquote. Adeshina said. He went further. Before then, I had not worked in government and I had no desire to work in government. But when the invitation to work with him came, I took it because he was a man I admired. After he won the election in 2015, and said, come and work with me, I wanted to say no, because I was managing director of the Sun newspapers. I was president of the Nigerian Guild of Editors, NGE. I did not want to leave what I was doing. I was very reluctant when I was asked to come to government. When I resigned my appointment, I began to cry because I did not know what I was going into, unquote. We have the honor of having Mr. Femi Additional literally in our studios. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Well, let's start on the lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you how are you fitting back into uh, normalcy, quote unquote? <laughs> Well, uh, the truth is that even while I was in government, I was not out of normalcy. <laughs> I was still a member of the society. I didn't cocoon myself in uh, government. I didn't make myself unreachable. I was still part of society. So finishing 10 months ago and uh, coming back home was not difficult for me. Still on the lighter note, uh, were you also uh, were you also stricken by the uh, reported voodoo, uh, invisible voodoo uh, phantom in the presidency? Uh, one of your predecessors actually uh, was once quoted to have to have stated that there is a, a there is a phenomenon <laughs> that ordinarily plagued uh, those who, who worked in, in the villa. Were you... Well, I, I think if you have read the book, Working with Buhari, it's a whole chapter that was dedicated to that. I didn't see anything untoward. I didn't see anything mystical or mysterious in the villa. It, I think it's just a myth. And anybody that claims things like that happened is the one that can defend it or justify it. But I was there for eight years, nothing untoward, nothing unusual. Would you not think that uh, maybe when people uh, think that those who are going into the villa would hurt in a particular way, given what they think they know about the antecedents and they see them acting in seemingly uh, contradictory way, maybe that's why they, they reason uh, like, your, like the administration you served and the president you served uh, was, was once thought to have subscribed to the idea of devolution when he was, when he was campaigning, especially in 2014. Uh, was once thought to... to uh, be a president that was going to bring about a more profound degree of uh, sanity in, in, in public life. Uh, and so, you know, people naturally would take to such an opinion from whoever 
may have served in the villa, that maybe when people get ensconced in the villa, there is a degree of detachment from, from the, the Nigerian public. How would you want to respond to that? Uh, well, it, it, it would be a fallacy. And I'll, uh, I'll give you this account. There was a time that things were quite difficult in the country. You know now, a lot of people say, being power, we are hungry, we are hungry. There was a time when they were worried that things were difficult too, and things were expensive. So one evening, I went to see him at home. And I said, Mr. President, do you know that there's a lot of complaint about scarcity of food and the prices of essential commodities and all that? He said, that, I know. He said, I have people from my constituency who give me feedback. He said, so I know what is happening, and we will do our best to make life better for them. So that shows you that when you are there, there are different feedback mechanisms you can have. And unless you shut all those avenues, then that is when you become closeted from reality. But uh, there was this particular audio leak from, from the then uh, Honorable Minister for, for uh, Transport, uh, uh, right Honorable Rotimi Amechi, when he said uh, it was, it was uh, jocularly referring to some characters who felt they could complain. He said, he said who, who doesn't even read newspapers? What do you concern? concern? There was that audio leak there. Uh, and it gave the impression of a man who was living in his own world. A man who was so who was so far away from the reality of the Nigerian environment that even you know, a ministerial character could have the, could have, uh, the temerity to, to uh, allude to his principle as somebody who could not be, who could not be bothered by any, any opinion or any, uh, especially sh uh, social media uh, opinionation that, that some, some people thought would, would, uh, would reverberate to him. Well, just like you said, it was a leak. And the nature of leaks is that you can't authenticate it. So, for all we know, it could have been cooked up. It could have been manufactured. I didn't hear Minister Mechi saying, yes, I said so. Neither did he say, no, I didn't say so. So, for all you know, it may not be true. But... The president, whether I walked with, was the one who told me as his media advisor that 10 a.m. every day, I want the media highlights on my table. And when you give it to him, he begins to read it immediately. And one time he told me, he said, when I read the media highlights, at times I may not even read the main paper again. He said, when I read the highlights and I want to know more, I find the paper you have referred to in the highlights and I go to read that story. So... I guess uh, <laughs> in this age of uh, information, mm. information inundation, uh, that is what most of us do anyway. Yeah. Even those of us who are in the trade, in the morning you want to look at the highlights and those uh, items that are of interest to you, mm -hmm. you then dig further by, yes. uh, uh, I'm not saying, uh, you know, <laughs> is your brief to hold. Uh, you know, it's a lifelong brief, you, you, you and uh, Gaba Shehu. Yeah. I was a bit sympathetic to you and Gabashio. And uh, I must confess that uh, on a number of occasions, I think I, you know, just repeating some of the lines that I had used, I would say, you know, I can't really blame Gabashio and Femi Additional because uh, for me, it would border on a miracle to competently speak for an incompetent government. Uh, many of, you know, many of the things that happened, and it's not very inconsistent with the presidential system of government because it's like, uh, it's like a big orchestra. Somebody inevitably will miss a chord. Somebody will miss a note. Uh, that's not 
Uh, even in America, where we've copied it from, we know that uh, the president may be speaking to a particular agenda and you could have one or two. But I haven't said that. What was the greatest challenge that you personally had whilst loyally and faithfully working for the man Buhari as his official spokesperson? Well, let me first um, attend to one word you used, an incompetent government. That's your opinion. Uh, uh, that was what I used to say. Uh, well, I, yeah. I, I never say it's not my opinion. It, I hold it. it is your opinion. I, I, I hold you it. have a right to it, but it doesn't make you right. No, I never uh, said that. Uh, I never uh, said it was gospel. You have, I said, but you I have used to empathize with you <laughs> and Gabba Shehu. You know, because sometimes, you know, I would I would look at the two of you looking like, you know, if I were to so places with this gentleman, no, 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 what could no, I have no. done better? You, you can't begin to pontificate that whatever is my opinion is the gospel truth, is what is right. I never said it to you. Gospel. But you have a right to it. Oh, thank you. You have a right to thank it. Thank you for, so, at least, at least, if that makes you more democratic, <laughs> I, I'm more of a democrat than I would have thought of, of somebody that worked with uh, uh, a principal that, you know, that, that, that that's, that's a that, mistake. That, that that's no nonsense. That's yeah. a mistake you have made. We'll it. get to it. We'll okay. Get to it. Yeah. Okay. You, you were asking what is the challenge? Every Specifically, that you perceived, that you encountered, that you had to, within the context of your personal values, your principles, your your understanding of your uh, profession, how, how did you juggle it? Well, I wouldn't say there was anything that came up that was insurmountable. The nature of challenges is that they are meant to be confronted. Any challenge that came, we confronted it, and as much as possible, we tried to surmount it. I wouldn't say there was anything in my eight years in government that gave me a stiff challenge, and uh, maybe it, it, it amounts or amounted to regret. No, nothing, nothing. I just took things in my stride as they came. And I, I believe that I did my best. A particular passage in your book uh, speaks to the fact that when uh, the distinguished uh, Senator Bukala Saraki emerged as the president of the, of the Senate, yes. uh, we knew that it, it was against the run of play of what the establishment, the, the, the party establishment, that's the APC establishment wanted. Yeah. Uh, but many of us just felt that he ultimately emerged because a man who was predisposed to allow, to, a man who was predisposed to allowing democracy to run his course was not, uh, the, the, President Buhari was not ready to use any form of intimidation or, but from the way you have reported it, he seemed not to have uh, liked it. You had to work on him a little bit to even uh, concede to really uh, congratulating, uh, congratulating the new leadership of the then uh, newly emerged leadership of uh, of the of the Senate. Uh, how could we have bought the line, those of us who thought we were tea leaf readers and political analysts, how could we have on the one hand bought the line that it was, it was just because he didn't want to uh, interfere with the process and yet somebody as proximate to him as he were uh, still is and writing from the perspective of somebody who still uh, wants to portray him as a Democrat, uh, you know, write that. It, it was not a line. It was reality. Because President Buhari is on record as having said before the proclamation of the National Assembly that whoever emerged as the leader or the leadership of both houses, he will work with. He was on record as having said that. That means 
yes, the party has this prescription. Or rather that the prescription of the party is what happens. But if it happens the other way, we will work with anybody that imagines. But then, somebody else imagined through subterfuge was what the president couldn't brook. If he had emerged fair and square, there would have been no issue. Remember the background uh, happenings. They were waiting for a meeting with the party. And then some people went behind to begin to meet. Left the venue uh, yeah. and joined the plenary. Uh, yes. And at the, the, at election, the expense of and the election majority of... Place while a large chunk of the people were not there, still waiting for the meeting with the party leadership. And because they had formed the quorum, something constitutionally acceptable was deemed to have happened. So it was the subterfuge and the hanky-panky that went in with it that the president took. No, no, no wanting to be too forensic. Well, you know, I was a bit disturbed as an onlooker because... At the said meeting that the, uh, the senators elect of the party mm -hmm. were supposedly uh, scheduled to have, all of them had congregated a detachment of at least what made some of us what convinced us that the president was going to come was because a detachment of army operatives were already on the ground mm -hmm. and the only elected officer of state in Nigeria that is protected by personnel or officers or operatives of the Nigerian army is the commander-in-chief. So we thought he was going to come, but there was a bit of a delay because it, it like came in from a foreign tour. Germany, that morning. Yes. The, the, the very morning. Mm. So, and in your opinion, which is not gospel, you, you thought some people uh, play the first one on the party uh, and play the quistling and went to join forces with uh, the other side and ultimately uh, gave us a very uh, chimeric <laughs> chimeric uh, leadership of the Senate where, where the substantive president was the president of the Senate was the party from the majority party but the vice president, the deputy president of the Senate was from unusually oh, the, opposition the opposition party. But even at that, as a Democrat your principal ought to have accepted it. I, I, we, we have covered that ground. He would have accepted it if it was fair and square. But it was not. There was subterfuge. So uh, how long did it take you to convince him that he needed to, <laughs> to do what Democrats ordinarily do across the world? Sometimes you, you, sometimes you, get, the, you, get, you get the leaking and keep on thinking. Uh, but yeah. but the, the important thing is that at the end of the day, he agreed that the statement should be issued. Uh, if you read the book, he inserted one word that where I wrote that a constitutional process had been concluded. He inserted the word, some words. <laughs> so he now read a constitutional process has somewhat been concluded. So that's what happened. But eventually. I but the constitutional process <laughs> was concluded. It was. That, and that was what I wrote. And then he inserted the word, somewhat. Because. There was a lot of shenanigans that went into which that were process. not which were not unusual in in a political environment. Not unusual, but there is also party supremacy, and everybody that is a loyal party member is expected to defer to the party. Uh, uh, using that now as as the microscope to to analyze managing a principled, often obstinate man. 
Uh, sorry, it's, it's meant in the positive. I agree with uh, you. you know, uh, I agree with that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 can be principled to that point of obstinacy. Obstinacy, <laughs> yes. I, 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 and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, eight years of your life was spent micromanaging not only the intellectual persona, but indeed the emotional persona of a man who could tell you to your face that, I, you know, because of such things that you have mentioned, like subterfuge, um, I, I'm not saying it's not true. Many of us outside too could see the machinations and the, but eight years working closely with such a man, you uh, and you were you, you didn't lose much of you didn't lose much weight. Oh. <laughs> And your chubby face. Was, uh, oh, sorry, maybe, maybe I wanted to take a. I wanted to take a punch at. Okay. One thing I need to iterate here, or reiterate because I've written it, is that on the day I resumed work, President Buhari told me, he said, "One thing I will want from you, additional, is the truth." Always. I say, always tell me the truth. In this kind of position, people can ring you and you will not know what is happening. He said, but from you, I want the truth. He said, when I argue, please argue with me. He said, I'm a general, so I can argue. He said, but argue with me. If you argue with me and you are right, I will end up agreeing with you. It was like giving me a blank check. And that was why on that day when I said, let's issue a statement to congratulate the leadership of the National Assembly. And he said, no, he would not issue. I argued with him until he agreed. There was another time, much later in the administration, and a, 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 a different party from the ruling party won election in one state. I went to a meeting. We need to congratulate the no. new party and their candidate that were. He said, why should I congratulate them after they beat my party? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, Mr. President, you have to do it. So why must I do it? I said, you need to do it. Otherwise, it will be misinterpreted. And I showed him the statement I had prepared. He read through. And then he said, go and issue. If I didn't insist, that statement would not have been issued. So, <laughs> with such a person, uh, 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 and like any other, uh, like any other human being, uh, uh, sometimes these things are natural. You know, <laughs> when your when your side is uh, is uh, walloped, or yes. you feel okay. Uh, my, uh, you see, uh, and this uh, this perhaps will be the last time I mention it. Mm. I I. I, I I earlier said that I often empathized with you. And the word empathy it was the word I, that usually came to me then. Because the administration at a point went into or nurtured a culture of taciturnity. You know, it, it, <laughs> it was it, it, it was almost it almost got to a point of condescension. You needed to hear from from the president, and the president was like in in Mongolia, mm. and we had we we were getting exasperated. Some of us were getting exasperated with Femi Adeshino and Gabashewu. I mean, Gabashewu is not uh, Muhammad Buhari. Femi Adeshino is not Muhammad Buhari. We, what instructed that strategy of alienation and near, near kukuni? Let me, let me borrow the word you had earlier used. I will not call it alienation. I will call it a style peculiar. To and and that was a metaphor, you, a metaphor and phraseology. You were very, <laughs> yes. you were very adept at you. Yes, yes. Which was even far more irritating. <laughs> and even, and I, like I wanted to, like I wanted to. It was even far more yes. irritating. Yes, because was, I had also been a student of stylistics 
in school. I remember my stylistics lecturer telling us that style is idiosyncratic, which means it differs from person to person. Showing car style is different from Achebe's style. Achebe's style is different from J.P. Clark's style. Style was peculiar to each of them. So also with the president, Donald Trump had his style where he would personally tweet and land himself in trouble. <laughs> he and leave his <laughs> media team. Media team. <laughs> they are not packing the <laughs> And then President Buhari left things to us. We just needed to cross-check very crucial things with him before we issued. Now let me give you an illustration during COVID. You know, there was a lot of trepidation everywhere. It was going to wipe out the world. It was going to wipe out Nigeria particularly and the black race. So, when there was going to be a shutdown, the president made a broadcast. A week after, he made another broadcast. And in another two weeks, he made another broadcast. Three broadcasts within a month. I was then on the radio station and somebody called in and said, we want the president to speak to us. He must speak to us. He must speak to us. And then I asked the person, I said, this month alone, there have been three broadcasts. Isn't that but, president speaking to the country? But that was a time. Then but, what they wanted was a president like uh, Donald Trump, who would be tweeting. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but that was a time when many world leaders uh, many more world leaders were almost literally in the faces of their of their populace. The president rose to the occasion and he set up a presidential task force under COVID, headed by the Secretary to the Government, Boss Mustafa, which did a fantastic job. In fact, the UN Secretary General commended Nigeria for the way it tackled the COVID uh, challenge. What mattered was result and not just the body movement. Nigerians just wanted a president who had all the body movements. Okay, uh, uh, let's speak to some of the, uh, mm. we, 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 we've tried uh, well enough to analyze, psychoanalyze the idiosyncrasies of the president. Mm -hmm. But you also had some very peculiar <laughs> idiosyncrasies. Uh, that, may, that means that style is idiosyncratic. I, I'm coming home to you. <laughs> okay. Because at least, at, at least I could sympathetically pardon you. <laughs> uh, speaking for your principal, but you also took on some, some unnecessary battles. <laughs> how did the Wailing Whalers, how, how did that emerge from yes. uh, uh, lexicography? Le le yes. If you also read my book, a whole chapter. Was but you must tell our viewers. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to tell it now. A whole chapter maybe, that will, maybe that will even make some people buy, <laughs> buy your book. A whole chapter was dedicated to the Wailing Wailers. What happened? In the early days of the administration, Olisa Metu was a spokesman for PDP. Anything the president did or did not do, he will issue a statement. If it rained too heavily, he will issue a statement against Buhari. That was his, that was his, that was his portfolio. <laughs> if it didn't rain, he will say it's Buhari's fault. Anything, he issued a statement. It became very exasperating. When, to, to you? No, well, to anybody to you, who was following and, 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 the and party. partisans of your, of your party. Oh, well, we, we, and we were in a large number. So one day, he issued one unnecessary statement from my view. I then did a tweet. I said, these people were in power for 16 years. Now they have lost it. They do not seem to realize that they are not going to taste that power for a long time. I then ended it with willing willers. So who was I talking to? PDP and his spokesman, Willis Ametu. That tweet was done in August 2015. Remember, the government came into power May 29. So it had only served June, July. The third month was when that tweet was done. War followed. Ah, he has abused us. Not PDP people, people generally on social media who were anti-Buhari, 
He has called us willing with us. He is, he is disrespectful. He is this, he is that. So they assumed that epithet for themselves. That they were the willing willers. Well, and mean, because I didn't refer to them as willing willers, well, well, and they adopted it. So I said, well, if you have adopted it, you are welcome well, to it. Would you want to agree with me that you see sometimes you present a very innocuous facade <laughs> or visage <laughs> of, of a face. You act like you can barely kill an ant. <laughs> You, but you are a very mischievous when it comes to when it comes to matters of the pen. You could be very mischievous. What instructed you signing, even if it was Metu and uh, and PDB? What instructed the phraseology Willing Willers? Yeah, because we knew Bob Marley and the Willing Willers, and then we had a party which worried about everything. So I then called them Willing Willers. So as as innocent and chubby <laughs> as the face looks, uh, don't be fooled. <laughs> this man sometimes he, he sometimes goes to hunt for a fight. Well, Shakespeare says there's no art to find a man's What's construction good? in the face. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> now, it reminds me of another TV host who said, talking about the same thing. He said. You are a gentle troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, a gentle. You know, I, 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 you know I, some of us could, some of us knew that uh, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't want to run away from a fight, yeah, yeah. but you would pretend and give a, you know, and give a facade of a very comely, <laughs> comely. I don't give a poncho, you know, <laughs> but you may slightly be biting. Anyway. Um, there were some, there were some unfortunate incidents mm. in Asoro that any, any media, uh, any media professional would find it difficult to manage. Mm encounters, some reported encounters between Her uh, Excellency, the First Lady, and some family members. Mm -hmm. One incident when there was a chase and mm -hmm. somebody jumped the wall and there was, uh, there, there, there were some mm -hmm. um, uh, reported shots fired. I'm picking my phrase as well. Though. Yeah. I wasn't there. It was in the public. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, moments like that, uh, at moments like that, somebody like you and uh, Malam Gaba Shew would have to not only sit by yourselves, but sit uh, with your coterie of uh, strategists. What did it take? Uh, how did you manage such, you know, on the one hand, it related more with the family than with the person of the president. Exactly. On the other hand, the people would need uh, some modicum of logical uh, explanatories, quote unquote. And I was thinking, I, I, I once told a friend then, was often, what would you expect? What would you expect a family additional or a Gaba show to, to, to say about this now? If you say a bit too much, you, Madam could be offended. If you say a bit too much, a president is, was such then that we would, you would even even know is uh, he, he had this emotional emotional management style that he could go blank. You wouldn't even know. So how, how did you guys? Yes. Um, for me and for us in the administration, family was off limits. Off limits. We didn't touch. I, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember that you, mm -hmm. you emotionally, mm -hmm. you emotionally lashed us with that line too. <laughs> Some of your lines are coming now to hunt. <laughs> <laughs> who who yeah. first used that line? I think it was was it Obama during the campaign, and there was an issue about. Uh, but you, you borrowed it. Yeah. You borrowed it abundantly. I borrowed it. Uh, Obama said, "No family is off limits." So, me too. That was the position I took. 
family is awfully which I was. And I was and feeling, you want me to give you, and I was feeling, ah, but boy, you're not the only love, but boy, you know, sorry, sorry, sorry for, sorry for the French. No problem, that was one weekend I, I came home, you were on the radio station, and you were criticizing me so much, I said, who is this person? I got loud, ah. What did I do to you? <laughs> you know, sometimes you, sometimes you got, you got me so livid, and I would think. Ah, but you see, and a part of me would again say, but what could you have done yeah. if you were to swap places yes. with? I, I'm not doing this as a PR for you. I know because I know. some no. some people are watching now and they are feeling. You know, I, I still have my cane. <laughs> So we are in, uh, uh, you know, okay, uh, yeah. okay, yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to speak the French, but you have helped me now to speak the Yoruba. I have my book. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a very delicate and sensitive assignment, and you have to use your sixth sense to do it. Otherwise, you land yourself in trouble. You became the first Nigerian to hold the position for two terms yes. of a president. Yes. Uh, is, is not only in Nigeria, in most liberal democracies, it is perceived to be one of those uh, portfolios with lots and lots of banana peels. Yes. Uh, littering, littering the welfare of the professional or the person and lean in because uh, whichever way you speak, uh, some will be happy, especially loyalists and partisans of the party of the president. But some, even if you, even if you, uh, you know, uh, walk wrote to me Williams from the grave. <laughs> Uh, and Ghani Williams was, yeah, which was, uh, so, and Ghani Fawaimi was backing with me Williams. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you couldn't, you know, that, that was how, because of the rabbit partisanship mm -hmm. that social media, oh, let, before, before we uh, go into, you became the media advisor of the president in an age when, Conventionalism left journalism, yes. left public relations, yes. left uh, public perception uh, ma management. management. Yes. Now, speaking to students of journalism, public relations, uh, because at some point we have to we have to appropriate some of the experiences you gain there mm -hmm. for the benefit of. Especially as it relates to the fecundity of how, you know, information, sometimes negative, most times negative ones, come from the social media. How did you go about it? It, it, it was really tough. You see that um, it was under that administration that social media like exploded in Nigeria. It has started under... Jonathan, you know that Ruben Abati had to tackle <laughs> people no, 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 on social media at, at a point. But by the time we came in 2015, it was everywhere. It was every. It almost became a national distraction. So what I did was I had to get on all the platforms of social media too. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that. Make a I, confession now. Yes. You know, <laughs> I, 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 you holding an imaginary Bible. Most of those tweets by the president was not directly by the president. No. This is it how was it, by you people. This is how it happens. There is a digital team headed by Tolu Ogulesi. When we do statements for the president, most of which are approved by him, they then convert it to tweets. That's how it happens. So uh, is, you know, it was more of a proxy yes, kind of... Oh, yes. It was a statement okay. we had issued. Uh, the, the back room, the back room guys are already <laughs> chasing us out of the studio. But I can't but ask this: uh, looking back now, and you know, the incumbent president has been very circumspect, not speak, not making any negative mm -hmm. allegation about 
his predecessor, or, but we have some officers of of the executive now speaking to how some things were done with utter absurdity, incongruity, lack of respect for processes, procedure, and the rule of law. Uh, you, as somebody who was part of that administration, how do you sometimes feel when you wake up and you see there are still allegations, but and you see the MFLA and the CBN story go one way. Uh, you you hear some, uh, you read about some uh, abuses of processes and how it, it did seem, if one were to draw a picture, that uh, the president was being, not directly, but in a way being painted not to be in control. On January 16, when this book, Working with Buhari, was publicly presented, President Buhari was there, he made a speech, and he said, when things are not put on record, revisionists will have the day. He said, for everything that was done under him in his administration, the records are there. So anybody that wants to check anything should look at the records. So all those who are talking today, they will fare better if they go to look at the records to find out what exactly happened under President Buhari. If they look at the records, they will find that their questions are already answered. Is it Reverend Femi Adesha? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like when I get this tricky, honestly. Even me, I'm, I, I, was, I was thinking, I know you are, you know, you have an ecclesiastic uh, I do. Uh, I do. title of a sort. I do. Is it Dickin? I do. Reverend? I just love the word brother. Uh -huh. Oh, brother. You okay. call me brother Femi, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, um, uh, loyalty is said not to be an act that is done only when you are seen to be doing it. Um, that you are still standing by your principal and using the giftings of God in your life to still want to give... Uh, the record as best as you believe it should be seen. All the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate Wish you all the best. I appreciate it. This is where we wrap it up for today. Uh, quite an encounter with Mr. Femi Additional. I am Bola Oba. Mm -hmm. <laughs>